Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, I just got out of transi transition from bed, and it's still the third. There's a tendency, because I'm now just getting up, <clears throat> is to call this the fourth day, but that's not what it is. It's actually the third day, so it's the uh, uh, 17 hours and 18 minutes into the third day of November 2021. And we're getting our day started. I'm getting an understanding more of what's happening with your dreams. Uh, but we do have a package opening. As the dreams before are basically indicators of behavior. <clears throat> they reflect how you behave, what your behavior is. And it also reflects your 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 feelings, your emotions. These are uh, the components, if you will, of a dream. And so, a dream may be seem bizarre because you haven't necessarily figured out what the components are. In some senses. But in other senses, you may not have conquered the things you thought you conquered. In other words, it's always an ongoing process. And this is no no exception for last night. Or what I call last night. Okay, so we've got uh, another plug. This, I, order, I ordered two different sets of plugs. See how that ended up working out. Uh, I wait for specials and stuff like that. So, and I got this one on a special. And the last one that was sort of Ordered, I ordered uh, two together. I ordered four from one place and then uh, one from another based on a special. Because you only, well, only could order that one. Uh, and so it came in. And get it on the package here. And here you go. The way it works is you've got one hot plug and three plugs that are uh, 3.1 amps. So you can plug basically three devices into it. If you get one that only has three of them in here, you can only plug two devices in it before you start losing power and the uh, the, the uh, phones, the tablets don't charge properly. Oh. So I'm still trying to figure things out in terms of how uh, the dreams are working out. There's still a lot of work to do. And a lot of it has to do with my own sense of how I exist within the world. This is sort of the issue that, that Lyle's having is his own existence within the world. And more often than not, the problem that you have in the world, with the world, is your own perception of how you see the world and uh, where you are in it in terms of either fitting in or not fitting in. And then there are a certain set of emotions behind it that if these emotions are triggered, let's say, uh, then this is when the, call the existential or the mental health crisis kicks in. But as I said before, because it's emotional, it's not logic, it doesn't matter what you explain to the person, the person has to be able to ride through it, they have to have, be able to experience it, uh, and then at some point in time, they have to become okay with it. They have to understand, okay, this is, this is the way I feel about this. Not the necessary way I am. This is simply the way I feel about this particular situation. And once they come to that sort of sense of, okay, this is where we are, you know, placing yourself on some of a, somewhat of an, an emotional, an emotional map. No emotional map repeating again to, to pronounce things properly because uh, my pronunciation is off the speech is off because of the fatigue and this is constant this is this is almost continuous because there is no night there is no day and this is what happens when you're in an almost continuous state of sleep deprivation so but anyways this is, you have to get to that state where where you have you're sort of somewhat that you, not you're happy, but you're okay with your understanding of things. 
then what happens, you can proceed from there and to see what type of things you can, can change. How you change your perception, how you can change the world, you know, your area of the world around you. And then changing your perception. And maybe changing by, by changing some of the feelings that you have for it. But unless you, unless you walk through your feelings, and a lot of people don't want to do this, sometimes the reality is so far beyond them in terms of what they can handle, they simply turn off and and go back to bed again. You know, they 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 they, 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 call, they consider themselves consider themselves to be woke, but they've woke. They've seen, looked, you know, took a look around, saw what was there, couldn't deal with what was there, and then went back to sleep again. But still argue, but still argue that they're woke. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of this. Is, if, if a person is put in a situation where they can't do anything, but they feel helpful. And this is something known as the learned helplessness, helplessness that the Lyle was talking about. This, then you're going to see, but you're not going to see. You're gonna. This is it, it's a, 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 a terminal case of ignorance. You have the ability to see initially, but once you exist in denial long enough, you can no longer see. The, the sight is removed from you. You can no longer see. And this is no longer uh, ignorant. This is well, basically a, a, a capacity issue. You no longer have the capacity to learn or understand or to see what else is going on around you. So this is this, and this is what was defined as moron and idiot or feebly minded. And this is what the top top doctors and scientists at, of the day. This was back in the eighteen hundreds. When women were classified as feebly minded, who you married mattered. You know, the reading mattered, and a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is back again. It's just, but it's, it, before it was under the religion of God, and now it's under the religion of man, the humanism. And but it's the same end result, and you get a lot of chaos in these particular periods, where the system has fundamentally collapsed, and this is what we're experiencing now. We're seeing the collapse, the fundamental collapse of the system. So anyways, uh, that's where we are right now. Uh, those are observations, those are notes, and uh, we will definitely have an observation vlog tonight. Uh, uh, there's a vortex setting up around the Arctic Circle that hits, uh, comes all the way down uh, into upstate New York, and uh, we're just a little bit above upstate New York, right across the... Uh, 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 be Lake Ontario, uh, but from a global satellite p p picture, what I'm seeing is this massive vortex, and it's not moving. It's regenerate. It, it goes off a little bit and meanders left or right, you know, east or west. Sometimes a little north south it meanders, but it's pretty much constant. And so this is where it's going to be. It means it's going to bring a lot of cold in. Uh, so we're in for for for. for uh, Upstate New York, all the way down, maybe even into, into uh, Boston and uh, the Maine, stuff like that. You're going to have a very, very cold winter. And depending on how much moisture comes up from the south, uh, that will determine how much snow we have. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of cold. Basically, the heat meeting the cold is what you get, get as rain. And in the winter, you get the heat meeting cold is uh, what you get as snow. So. <laughs> that's uh, the basic fun functionality. Uh, and this is based on observation, not based on any particular model. Anyways, I will see you uh, in the next transition, probably outside of doing the uh, observation vlog. Well, it is uh, 15 hours and 3 minutes into the fourth day of November. Well, the way I'm sleeping, uh, I think a week has gone by, and my recollection, but it's only the 4th. This is how the days actually kind of slow down. Where you th you, they, they slow down because the, you think they've slowed down. You, you, you feel like you've gone through an entire week. But you're pulled back to remember that this is still the 4th. <laughs> so, um, in the days of confusion, you get some of the editing wrong, you get some of the things, some of the things that you think you should have gotten done, don't get done because it hasn't been long enough yet. It, this is 
where some of the confusion comes in. And, uh, and this is, you know, if, the, if you notice, if, if you're paying attention to this, but anyways, uh, the vlogging is all over, oh, all over the place in terms of the time. There is no set time schedule for, for typically when I vlog. Uh, th that's why this is now, and typically what you do have is, wh what is typical, I should say, uh, is when I'm doing the YouTube, when I'm doing the YouTube stroll, that's typical. As I said, that's my routine. When I get back to doing the YouTube stroll, that's my routine, that's where I feel comfortable. I can sort of sit and take stock of the day. I got my deliveries in from, uh, uh, from my grocery store. Uh, I did my food shopping. I got, I drink a lot of milk still, so I, I got, they come in bags in Canada, so I got, uh, uh, three bags. In each bag has three, has the three, uh, 1.3 liters of, of milk in it. That's how they do it. There were four liters, but they broke it up into three bags, so it's approximately, uh, 1.3 liters. Uh, I got my ice cream again, not, because I have, uh, every time I have my milk, I have a shake. And I use a chocolate shaker, so I got a fun, I found a good ice cream, high quality ice cream. Uh, for not that expense, for, 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 for not that much money. And, uh, sat down and did some figuring out in terms of Uber Eats and stuff like that. Uh, I think, uh, that's gonna be it for Uber Eats and, uh, skip the dishes and so on and so forth because I don't really see any use for it. I don't see the value in terms of what I'm getting. They give you coupons and stuff like that. There's all these offers, but what happens is afterwards, after they give you the offer, they pile in a, a large, a large chunk of these fees. So you think you're going to get away with not, well, not paying anything, but they don't do that. It, 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 so on a, on a on a food order from McDonald's that I got that should have been free, it should have been zero. I ended up paying ten dollars in extra fees. Now, I couldn't figure out, you know, you, you look at them, they, they seem to be normal, but the thing is, is that I don't understand how you get $10 in fees when you have a $35 off coupon. And, of course, they don't tell you what's excluded from the coupon. In other words, the coupon isn't all-inclusive. It, it's a, a selectional coupon, so in terms of only certain things are uh, covered by the coupon, so... You know how how oh how they figure that out is is beyond me. Uh, I said the Uber Eats experience was not so good. I think it's only I'm uh, using it occasionally. I haven't really decided what I wanted to do: DoorDash or, or Uber Eats. Yeah, I have to sort of compare compare the two and sort of see uh, what I like and what I don't like, and then go from there. It just you know a matter of experience. In terms of, if there were ever a case, a case where I do need to order food, I'll have that option. And it seems like they have offers on a daily basis for, like, for two for one and, and so on and so forth. In other words, they have enough coupons, they have enough incentives, uh, that if you need it on an occasion, it's, it's, uh, uh, you can use it as, as such. And that, that, that's the way I operate. You have to be economical with what you do. You try certain things, don't there? Are certain, leeway is in the budget, but uh, my decision is that uh, the uh, uh, the leeways that I have in my budget be better spent on equipment, stuff I need to do for, for, for research and for other projects that I'm working on, <coughs> uh, rather than, rather than uh, spending it on uh, just simply, you know, or ordering out, di dining in. I can fix my place up enough, and I've done it before, just that sometimes it falls off, and that's, that's now everything's fallen off. Uh, Wednesday was a pretty bad day in terms of uh, things going wrong. It wasn't terribly bad in, in the scope of things, but things just didn't necessarily go right. So <laughs> that's kind of where things kind of ended up. Uh, Carly Reese is back in the vlog again with her mother. So. so so she's okay with that. She's she hasn't been posting on her own channel, but uh, 
it is, as I said, it's hard to vlog. It's hard to come up with ideas to talk about. It's hard to uh, have the right conversations and so on and so forth. But if this is what you want to do, this is, this is where you want to go down. And I don't know if she does that. I mean, she's, she's got a good enough opportunity to do so, but there's a lot of competition out there. I mean, you're competing, uh, YouTubers are now competing with uh, with Hulu, Hulu, uh, Nick Plus, um, uh, Disney Plus. There's a number of channels that uh, the, basically the major, major corporations, the major networks, are now competing with streamers. That That's the, basically YouTubers. It's competing with Twitch and stuff like that. So you've got all, an enormous amount of competition out there uh, in order to sort of uh, try to bring in an audience. And, and, and like I guess like cable, like UHF, you're not going to be bringing in the millions of viewers. You're going to be bringing in maybe a thousand or so, you know, and be happy with the thousand. The, 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 I think the, the um, Carly's getting about 8,000 views per video, which is very good. Um so uh, that's how you would sort of sell your channel. That's how you would evolve things. Allie's more in the uh, Yowie vlogs again, but again, she's not doing anything on her own channel. So I know, I guess being in the well, yeah, being in the Yowie vlogs, being in our family nest, and to, for for Carly, will bring her in again. Kind of, it, it maintains the viewership. It, it, you know, when when Carly's not in um, our family nest, the viewership goes down. Uh, when she's in it, it goes up again. So she has value there. So this is something where she can sort of uh, work with her mother and, you know, work out a uh, profit-sharing plan or something like that so that uh, she has an income. I think Chase is sort of doing the same thing. Uh, is it, it really depends on how what, what your perspective is and where you see yourself going in the future. And the thing is, just because you're doing YouTube doesn't, doesn't, necessarily, mean, doesn't necessarily mean you can't do something else as well. Uh, you know, because uh, Candy from our friend family, and that's the mother. She does other stuff. She does a lot of other things. She has, she has, she has a number of businesses on the side. And so, uh, this is something they have to understand that, that maybe you'd have to branch out into a number of other different things. Take a look at what the mother's doing, seeing what type of uh, work or, or, or contracts you can get, and that would how that's how you would sort of pay your bills, and that's how you would exist. But anyways, I think that's it for our transition here. I have to change, because uh, my dad's going to pick me up in a bit for dinner. And I'm going to head on out. Alright, so I'll see you tonight for the, uh, when I'm outside doing op the observational vlog. And then when I'm back here doing the, um, uh, the uh, YouTube stroll. So that will be there, our transitions for today. And technically for tomorrow for the fifth well it is seven minutes or eight minutes into the uh, fifth day of November outside freezing I'm, not, I'm actually with the clothes I'm wearing now the, the clothes I got and this is the clothes I got from China for dirt cheap uh, I do, so I'm, sorry, I'm sorry Lionel but I do love China I like the uh, the, the cheap products they produce uh, I have no issues with them at all. <laughs> I thank God for them because, uh, oh, I am a Christian, an early Christian, but uh, I thank God for them because uh, I couldn't exist the way I exist right now in terms of the quality of life that I have without the cheap products from China. You got to understand, people need to understand, if you don't have money, if you're living on the margins, and I live on the margins, I have basically $40 a week. That's it. And that's $40 a week. For food, all my food that I have, I've only got forty dollars to spend a week. The rest go to equipment. The rest goes to all the different things I do, for the research and so on and so forth. I can't afford to be buying high end equipment. I can't afford the dollar a day, which is basically thirty dollars. Thirty dollars a month. You take thirty dollars a month. Oh, that's not okay. To you, it's nothing. You're living in the in, in, a, in a, an apartment on the Hudson. I don't do that because I, I'm an independent researcher. I want to be independent. I don't want to follow the product. I want to do exploration. And to do this, I have 
basically thirty to forty dollars a week to in order for food. That's it. Everything else goes back to research. That's how I exist. I buy cheap equipment. I buy things that are off, not sort of knockoffs or, or something called the, the, these are the uh, these are the, uh, uh, the counterfeit phones and you know not the real thing. Well, I'm sorry, I got my phone for uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, and I'm not going to spend uh, thirteen hundred dollars on the same phone. And then this, I've compared the phones. I have friends who have the top of the line. Apple this and Apple that, and I've got a cheap phone from China that cost me, you know, two hundred and fifty dollars. And we put it up side by side. My stuff outdoes theirs <laughs> in terms of the features and what I have on it. I have my 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 phones, which are my cameras, are also my laptops. They I have a full network hooked up to them, so I can transfer files back and forth across across my own cloud that I have. That's a Linux system, the Linux network. <laughs> the others don't. They don't have that. They don't have what I have. And you go, oh, how do you, how do you do all this? Well, I sit down and figure it out. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing when I first get into it, but there's always the first learning step. And then afterwards, you learn more and more and more. And as you learn more, you have more capacity. You add in more capacity. You keep pushing the ball forward. And the thing is, is that I can't do that and just simply toss my money away. So I, you know, if I don't have the money, I'm not going to buy your product if I can't afford it. It's that simple. I'm not going to buy your service if I can't afford it. So you haven't lost the sale because the sale was never there to begin with. I just don't have the money for it. And this is what, what a lot of these larger corporations don't understand: is that when people don't have the money, they don't have the money. And this is where, if they're locked out of a lot of different places like stores, oh, we're going to lock people out of stores if you're not properly this or that. Well, okay, fine, I'll go to the black market. There are a lot of avenues into the black market where there are no, where there is no rules. And you learn how to, you know, a lot of my neighbors who are, let's say, foreign, the, the, the Asian, I call, it, I call it the undercurrent or the undermarket, the hidden market. That hidden market between India and China, let's say 10% of the population is within, of, of, of either China and, 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 and India, is within the uh, zone we call the, uh, the hidden market or the underclass market. That's your black market. You're talking, if it's 150 million people, 10% of 1.5 billion people. This is the same thing for, for, for India. Again, uh, 150 million people. You're talking about a market, an underclass market of 300 million people. They have their own transport system. They have their own currencies. They have a lot of different things where if something collapses on the largest scale, on the macro scale, they're not going to even notice because they're not there. They're not in the larger middle class uh, markets. They're not in the malls. They're not in the high end hotels. They're always they're, they're, they're part of the underclass. They're in the uh, the, uh, the 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 ghettos of Calcutta. What does a uh, person who's living in the ghetto of Calcutta, that's what's called a slum dog millionaire. What does a person in the slum dog millionaire in that of those ghettos care about someone in in the Hilton or the Sheraton or you know or or, or, or Tri Peaks hotels or whatever they're called these, you know, oh, embassy suites hotel, where they have these, these nice apartments as hotel rooms. They don't care because it, it, it doesn't impact them at all. They're not going to eat there. They're not going to sleep there. They're not going to buy anything from that particular area of market. They have their own system. And this is what a lot of people get. They don't understand this. They don't understand that there is a lot more out there in terms of the underclass than there is in terms of what we call your middle middle class. And so what happens is that why are we not going to defeat China or even India? And it's because of the, of the underclass. The, the underclass is, is not is simply going to absorb the collapse. We're going to we're the upper classes like 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 Lionel. He's going to collapse into the lower class. He's going to collapse into the underclass. 
that has that existence. And he'll have to either learn how to he'll have to learn how to swim or he'll sink. That's it. So there isn't necessarily a doom and gloom to this, but it's just that you know if you want to be <laughs> my choice, I want to be an explorer. I want to be out on the edge. So this is part of exploration. Going to areas you don't know. People, no one's going to fund you for this because what are you going to do with the money you're going to give you? Well, I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm going, I don't know, over there, I guess. <laughs> That's exploration. Exploration is you're going into the unknown. So you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're going to see. There's no way to predict what you're going to see. And yet you're asking someone for a million to two million dollars. <laughs> because uh, uh, I don't know. What do you think they're going to tell you? Well, are you going to give me the money? back well, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, parrot back what you're saying. <laughs> and this is the nature. This is how things end up working out. And I said it's uh, now it's what is it? It's 15 minutes into uh, the uh, fifth day. Almost time for me to go in. I have another 45 minutes out here, and I'll be going in around 1 o'clock and uh, beginning the YouTube stroll. So I'll see you for that transition. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing better than I did before. Uh, a large chunk of the fatigue I have seems to have gone away. I'm warmer out here than I was before. So we'll see how, when I get in, uh, how my bo body reacts to warming up again. Once I hit the warmth, I hit the heat. Uh, that kind of knocks me out a little bit. Uh Anyways, this is it. We'll see you uh, in about an hour, oh, 45 minutes, around 1 o'clock, inside uh, for the transition into the uh, YouTube stroll. See you then. We are Cyborg Alpha. Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.